be separated. When the anointing comes upon a man, the man is separated. When the anointing comes up, came upon Paul, Paul was on his way. And then the light shone on him and he became blind. And so for three days, he was separated from those people that he was used to. Those people that encouraged him to kill. Those people that he was making sure for. And he was separated and kept in a place that he was alone. Three days, three nights without food or water. And in those three days, three nights, only Paul the Apostle knows his encounter. What we just read is, he was blind for three days and three nights. And then God sent someone to come and make him see. But those three days and three nights are not just empty. There is no servant of God that goes to bed and sleeps straight. If you go to bed and sleep straight, I don't know who you are serving. There is no time you close your eyes that God is not going to say something to you. You don't have to be a prophet. That is because your spirit man is awake and alert. So God will always communicate to you very spirit. Praise God. Now, to be protected means to save you from destruction. When Jesus was going about preaching, at the point, the Sadducees, they, they, they strive to lay hands on him to kill him. The Bible recorded that somehow Jesus maneuvered his way and left amongst them. That was just anointing, preserving him for the purpose, the end mission. Because that was not the way he should die or he ought to die. So if you have the anointing, whatever you go through will not destroy you. Because you are immunized, you are protected from those kind of things. You will die the way God has planned for you to, to come to him. Elijah, just take for instance Elijah. Imagine that Jezebel was able to kill Elijah. That would have been an insult to God. But God has to protect Elijah from Jezebel until he took him away alive the way he planned for it to be. So when your anointing is upon your life, God preserves you and protects you. Praise God. I showed one time that I was in the flight. Even in the Nigerian flight here, before they banished, uh, before they banned Virgin Airlines, before the Dana crash, I had an event in Lagos and I was coming back to Abuja. And I was in Virgin two days before the crash. Less than 48 hours because about this time, and when we took off from Lagos, the plane danced in the air. It kept dancing in the air. When I mean dancing, people were already passing out. People were shouting. So uh, most people in the plane were in senators, allergic clothes. We were only a few of us looking like young people, like you know, looking like a single. They were as if the plane was arranged to carry some dignitaries. The plane kept dancing. Dancing, we will see rock, we will go back up, we will dance, they will shout Jesus, they will shout Allah. People will speak in tongues, people will confess their sins, and they were praying. In all this, I was silent. I don't know what, tomorrow, I don't know what gave me that courage. In all this, I was silent. I remember the prayer I prayed at eight years, or maybe less than ten, but not seven, maybe. I prayed to God when I was hearing about is he crash for the first time as a child? I prayed to God, and that prayer was, Lord, I'm making a covenant with you. I have no idea that God wants to use me, but I do know that I see angels, and I pray for people, and they are healed, because I just saw myself as a block rosary girl. If you're Catholic, you know that there's a block rosary, so I'm amongst the three people that used to lead the rosary. That was the highest I could do. That was the Catholic child must go there. So, and I told God, in this life, I'm not going to die by plane crash. I'm not going to die by sea. If I'm in a ship, the ship will not capsize. I'm not going to have accident. And to the glory of God, today I have not had any. Thank God. I've not, have, I've not been in a car driving myself or wherever. And this is the car had us then. Somebody now injured. Somebody now. No, 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 no. It's always going to be nearly. And so somehow we got to Lake Abuja and the plane was going to land on the mountain and then we keep praying and it took off again, came back to the wrong way and landed peacefully. So when it landed, everybody was not clamping and crying and thanking God. And that's when I stayed quiet like this. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And when I said, thank you, Jesus, I said crying. The woman by my side that I was holding her apart to, to not to expose her because she was already... She was already shouting her children, her husband, her family. She was naked. So they were asking me, only about three of us did not cry in this lane. You that are small girl, what gave you the confidence and the courage to cry, not to cry? I said, you are lucky I'm in this lane, no? because it cannot crash. I said, what was the confidence? I said, God has been showing me many things he wants to do with me in this life. I have not even started doing it. So I cannot die. 
and I had an agreement with him as innocent, pure child that I must not die like this. So there is no how this plane was permitted to crash. So as they were all crying, what I was reminding God is that remember to have confidence too. As a child, I can remember after saying that prayer, I used to have savings. I had a 10 naira or a 2 naira. I had gone to the street to give beggars that my savings because I had a, a pocket money of 1 naira. My parents used to give me 50 kobo. So most times during the weekend, I would have saved 2 naira or something after my, my sweets and my M&M. &M. So when I do this kind of thing as a child, as a child, I will go and take that 2 naira and give to the beggars on the road. So I was sure in my spirit that it was established. So he said, why are you now crying now that you didn't die? That's you. I said, because I am surprised that God honored my word. And so everyone was walking out of the plane looking at me like, who is she? She must be, who is she? That is one time I know that God actually honors those he anoints and he protects them. That's why you can hear the stories of TV Joshua saying when he was born that the roof he was lying, they laid him as a baby, maybe less than a year. That stone came from the roof, fell into the house, and came to where he was laying and fell beside him. Why did that stone fall on top of him so he can die? So God has a way, and many other stories, God has a way of preserving those he has anointed, including you. All you need to do is to reestablish the covenant of anointing and say, Lord, your anointing preserves. So you will preserve me. Praise God. A wonderful time in my life, my life again was I was coming from Istanbul. And I when I got to the airport, I just went to the gate. I was tired. Let me let me rest. No matter. I brought my iPad to play game. There was no even where to sit. One man with his white collar, like a pastor in his suit, got up for me to sit down. I said, you can't get up for me. You are, you are elder, you are elderly man. Beside I'm young, I can stand. He said, no, no, you have to sit. So I now sat. I said, ah, oh, yeah, you pastor. So I asked the guy by the side to shoot so I could make space for him. Because I wanted to talk with him. So he was a pastor. As I was trying to talk to him, they announced for boarding 30 minutes early. I said, no, it's strange that pilot plane leaves earlier because many people miss it. It can only leave a bit later. So they took us to the plane. The plane we were going to fly just landed, and people in it are coming out, and we're waiting for them. I don't know what the rush was. People are coming out with their luggage, with their food. The people that are cleaning, are cleaning, packing the food. We are entering. And I was shouting. I was like, what the hell? Oh, my God. This is just 2016 here. And I was saying, oh, my God. Now I'm going to stand in cold and all those talking nonsense. And then we entered the plane. So we left immediately. Now, at that point, that point, when we are going to the plane, a bomb exploded in Istanbul airport. I'm sure you heard about it. So when we landed, my phone just, let me just put my phone on on the wrong way. The plane is still running. And my phone was ringing like, I'm like, ah, it wouldn't let me land. We phone landed on time. They said, yes, we want to confirm. They said they threw a bomb in Istanbul airport. And that was just about the time you should be in the airport. I said, well, then it's different today. Today they bothered us very early. So I had to leave the airport before the plane, can, the bomb can explode. So right there in the airport, in Nigerian airport now, when we're getting waiting for our bags, I said, you should turn your, your CNN on your phones or something, or check your news. You were just lucky that I was on this plane. I said, what's that? If you person by my side, what's that? I said, because that's where we left. That was a bomb blast there. And some of us like me were saying, why are we being rushed? We are being rushed because God wants to preserve us. So God has a way of always preserving and protecting the ones that he anoints. Praise God. Comfort TV, reaching the world, projecting the divine comfort mandate. To win souls, to deliver, to restore and empower destinies through the power of the Holy Spirit. Encounter the miraculous and the prophetic. I saw two young men. I see one in the US, one in, one in the UK. Encounter the wisdom of God for your relationship and marriage. Is it okay that a woman slaps you as a husband and you were like, are you, are, are you, are you kidding me? Leave my house today. But forbearance will say, don't say a word. Prophetess, give it to Regine, the woman of grace, anointed by God for this generation.